Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the September 2018 edition of Support and Save Thor News, where every month I have a little two or three day fundraiser to help keep my YouTube channel up and running. And you guys provide me with contributions and donations so I continue to bring you the best information in the solar system. So, if you can, uh, leave a PayPal link at the bottom. I appreciate all contributions and donations and the fact that I've been able to do this like this for over two years. I extremely appreciate it. I love making videos and I love bringing you all the information. And I would actually like to re-diversify back into the sun and planets and everything else. Because I too am tired of talking about weather all the time. But I will still be the watcher on the wall for you guys. And today... We are talking about NASA, because NASA is saying, hey guys, guess what? Astronomers have found the first evidence of possible moon outside of our solar system. Holy sh shnikes. First evidence? That is fantastic. Because, you know, as Carl Sagan says, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence by Carl Sagan. And being that this is our massive major space agency filled with scientists, they're going to have some wonderful evidence for us, I imagine. Asterisk. All right, let us read this wonderful article. And they have a fantastic, is this the photograph? Nah, wow, that's clear if that's a photograph. NASA's Hubble and Kepler Space Telescope have uncovered what could be the first moon outside of our solar system. More observations. Oh, so maybe that is a photograph. Asterisk. All right. Using NASA's Hubble and Kepler Space Telescopes, astronomers have uncovered tantalizing evidence of what could be the first discovery of a moon orbiting a planet outside our solar system. Oh, okay. Hold on. They don't have a photo of it in the top or the middle. I mean, the 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 Hubble telescope is a it's a telescope, right? I'm gonna. Oh, I should have typed this in before, but I did not. You see, like the Hubble telescope, it's a telescope. It's in space. It takes photos. And Kepler. It takes photos too, right? They take wonderful photos. Wonderful, wonderful photos. But there are no photos in this article. And so when I Googled ExoMoon in the last 24 hours, all I got was illustrations. So that is weird. You know, oh, a picture of a dude and a telescope. Another picture of a dude. So, okay. So, what, what the hell, man? What is this thing now where we don't get any evidence on extraordinary claims? That is wild. Okay, so take this with a grain of salt. Because, I don't know. Our space agency is weird, man. You know, we cancel the space shuttle. All we do is send robots to Mars like we forgot there are other planets. Um, You know, Venus is badass, and they haven't sent a mission to Venus in decades. I guess it's too hard to photograph, even from the outside. Anyway. The moon candidate, which is 8,000 light years from Earth in the Cygnus constellation, orbits a gas giant planet that, in turn, orbits a star called Kepler-1625. All right, let's put that in. All right. Kepler-1625 photo. So you can see it. So somebody's like, like, he faked it. It's really hard for males to fake it. Now let's go to images. Just any time. 
Hey, look, apparently there, there's no photos of that either. A lot of graphs and animations. All right. Okay, so, yeah, we don't have pictures of the giant gas giant. Or, and I'll remind you guys that in 1996, NASA started something called the ne Next Generation Space Telescope. And then they were going to launch it in 2006, and then it didn't launch because it had problems. And then um, they changed the name to the James Webb Space Telescope, and it was supposed to launch in like 2008, and then 2010, and then 2012, and then 2013, and then 2014, and then 2015, and then 2016, and then 2017, and then 2018, 2019, 2020 is the new date for the replacement and upgrade of the Hubble Telescope, which to me is weird. If you're a space agency, the most important thing you can have pretty much as a telescope, right? So, for us to be using, like, the Hubble is still our number one primary telescope. It is 25 years old. You know, like, is your smartphone now better than the phone you were using 25 years ago? That's my question. So it's just really weird that NASA, and I don't blame NASA, man. They have 30,000 employees, and they're just like your government. They're run by the same, you know, trillionaires that control our planet and my theory is that uh we have an oil and war economy and we've had an oil and war economy since 1880 and so the whole world has to use oil and the whole world has to fight and our entire economy is geared towards that people are like you're crazy i'm like really oil is now at its height of money in or price which oil makes gasoline i don't know if you knew that in like the last four years, so oil's back up to eighty dollars a barrel. And remember, the combustion engine was invented in eighteen eighty, which uses gasoline. So if science is so great, how come they can't upgrade a telescope? How come they can't invent something better than the petroleum combustion engine? Right? Like they want it, and then I don't know. It's just every it's twenty eighteen. Everything is foobar. And so. I don't even, like, I've done so many of these articles, and it's like, we don't even get a photo. What is this thing where people might just, like, say shit and then don't even have any shit to back it up? <sighs> Intriguing findings shows how NASA's missions work together to uncover incredible mysteries in our cosmos. Said Thomas Zerbuchen, Associate Administrator at NASA's Science Mission Director at Headquarters, Washington. It confirmed... This finding could completely shake up our understanding of how the moons are formed and what they can be made of. It sounds like it's made of shit, dude. I know the theory for our moon is that a giant asteroid hit Earth, ripped off part of Earth, and then the two, the giant asteroid and the part of Earth then coalesced to reach high static equilibrium and become our moon. And that sounds as dumb as your question disk theory, where a giant cloud of gas and dust gets so heavy in of the vacuum of space, it collapses upon itself and creates the stars and the moons and the planets. Why does nothing have to make sense? I guess it's like you can't argue with the body of science because every time they're like, no, 97% of us agree that you should shut up. And I'm like, what? It's kind of like on Twitter, I'm blocked by every volcano scientist for implying that the sun affects volcanoes in the core of our Earth. And they're like, pseudoscience. And volcano activity is totally normal and has been totally normal for the last hundred years. Why is everything so crazy? Also, I think covering hurricanes nonstop for the last 13 months and the weather and then this whole left-right fight constantly all the time, 24-7. Politics the only thing people talk about. My sense of humor is taking a severe dive. For that, I apologize. All right, in search of exomoons, Alex... Tichi and David Kipling, astronomers at Columbia University in New York, analyzed data from 20, 284 Kepler discovered planets that were comparatively wide orbits, longer than 30 days around the host star. The research found one instance in that planet Kepler 1625b of a transit signature with intriguing anomalies, suggesting the presence of a moon. We saw little deviations and wobbles in the light curve 
caught our attention. Fantastic. And we're going to get to see any of those deviations. Based upon their findings, the team spent 40 hours making observations of the blah, 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 blah to study the planet in intensively. Also using the transit method. Wobble, the companion moon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not. What? See, here you go. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope will be used to find candidate moons around other planets. It's weird. So, we can expect to see really tiny moons with Webb, Tichi said. I, I'm done with this freaking article. I mean, literally, <clears throat> NASA's been selling us the James Webb Space Telescope I don't know, for 25 years. And you know what's happened? Nothing. And if you put in James Webb Space Telescope and funny, my meme comes up. And I made this in 2014. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope robot, robot says, can I has more time and more money? And I made that in 2014, and they've delayed it three times since then. They've asked for more money and more time three times since I made that damn meme. So if you wonder, what is, and I was the first person to say, oh, by the way, the James Webb Space Telescope will never work. It has 82 unfolding parts. It's not only even a telescope, it's an origami experiment. So, where I think it is the petroleum and war industry that controls our space agencies, and I don't blame them, just like they also control your government. It's just, seriously, like science, like, how long are you going to tell us that this telescope is going to work? Like, how, you're not reinventing the telescope. You're just putting up a brand new one that has tw the 25-year technology improvements. And also, the technology curve says that Every single technology replaces itself with a better one every 3.5 years. So, if you designed a telescope in 1995, how how applicable is it today? Your design is like 20 years old. Oh, 20 years old. I mean, why is everything such a shit show clown car all the time? That's what I want to know. All right, everybody, stay cool. God bless everyone. And if you want to support more. If you want, every, you know, like everybody, most people just copy and paste. It's even like science is always going to say the same, like every scientist is going to say the same damn thing. They're all going to agree. Like, oh, the sun doesn't affect everything. It's human caused climate change. What? You know, it caused volcanoes, carbon. What? You know, if you want like, and even on the right side, the right side's always going to agree with the right. The left's always going to agree with the left. If you want one of the, like, I'm still one of the few people who has their own opinions and who will go against the grain either way if it is what I agree. So if you want more of that and if you want free thinking and non hive mind to continue, I'd appreciate your support and donation. And if you don't and you hate me, go ahead and leave a comment. That is cool too. You can, you can damn thumbs and hate me and I will live. And I will still love you. And I will still put out some of the best weather and science information on the planet. But sometimes I can be arrogant. I'm not perfect, but I try to be humble. So, everybody stay cool. Peace out.